Hello, this is Frankly Friday, how to prevent a spiritual heart attack series. Today, I want to encourage you to be aware of Satan's many tricks he uses to pay to play with our minds. This is another way for us to have a spiritual heart attack, and that is a spiritual blood clock. Blood clocks are very important on the natural side for keeping our bodies healthy. When you get a cut, blood nosebleed or even broken bones, blood clocks stop the bleeding and heal the injury. However, when blood clots uh, enter the bloodstream, serious complications can occur. Blood clots can travel through the bloodstream and block circulation to major arteries in the body, such as the heart, brain, and lungs. Blood clots can affect blood circulation by blocking either the arteries or the veins. And arteries carry oxygenated blood to different body parts, while veins carry blood back to the heart. However, in the heart, blood clots happen in the coronary arteries, the vessels that directly feed the heart muscle cells. If the arteries are affected by blood clot, the cardiac muscle in the heart will stop receiving blood and possibly die. This can eventually lead to a heart attack. A blood clot can be compared to a traffic jam during rush hour. During normal hours, traffic flows. Hey, at the steady pace, you're moving. However, traffic can significantly slow down or stop in case of an accident. This can happen to blood flow if a blood clot occurs in the heart. The communication with God stops. Why has communication stopped? because there is a spiritual blockage. When it comes to blockage spiritually, I have given it the name of a spiritual mental clock. This is when sin gets stuck in the narrow part of the mind, which affects the spiritual heart. And in all cases, it causes you to lose hope, power, and faith. Let me stop right here and name a few a uh, uh, few spiritual mental clocks. But first, let me let me tell you that these can be deadly. Also, let me tell you, I can hear you're asking the question, why am I always talking about deadly, deadly, deadly? Why am I always talking about death so much in this series? Well, I mention death so often because you only have one life to live. And when this life is over, there will be no more chances for you to get it right with God. Death is death. It's final. We must work the works of him who sit us while it is day. Night is coming. And when it comes, no one can work. Believe it or not, it is at the death when the dash falls in place and becomes the center of attraction. You know the dash. The dash that is used to define the day you were born and the day you died. It's amazing how so many of us fail to pay attention to that small, thin line that we all will receive one day. Perhaps if we gave thought to the dash before we received our dash, maybe we would still strive, we will strive to live a life that will represent Jesus just a little bit more. You see, it's great to know the day you were born so each year being beginning as a child, that date is what we call a birthday. And most of us, most of us celebrate each year of that date that comes around. The date on the other side of the dash is used to confirm or symbolize the day we died. In most cases, we celebrate that date as well, but the only thing with that is you, you are not here to enjoy the celebration as you were or as you did for your birthday. <laughs> as I said, those two dates are wonderful. But where the rubber meets the road is the dash. The dash represents the time you spent on earth, which is very important to how you spent that time here on earth. 
since you are still here, let's look at where we are with the time we have spent on earth thus far. Are you living your life to its fullest? Or are you still allowing those things that happened in the past to keep you from being free and moving forward? Keeping you from appreciating your tests in the past that has now turned into a testimony that you refuse to share because you still allowing people to have victory over your life. Are you doing your best as a sister, brother, husband, wife, niece, nephew, uncle, auntie, grandmother, grandfather? When people see you, how do they feel? Do they roll their eyes and say, oh Lord, here they come. Because you're always in need of something. Give me, give me, give me. Can I have? Do you have? Or do they see your name on their phone and refuse to answer it because you're always complaining? Or do they shake their head whenever they hear your name because of the bad decisions you made in the past, present? And it looks like you're making bad decisions as a part of your future. But guess what? Think about it. You had plenty of opportunities to be successful. Plenty of opportunities where you were blessed. Had a blessed job, but you quit it. But you refused to get out of your hog pen, clean up yourself, and move forward. Therefore, my next question is, would you be satisfied with the legacy on earth if you were to die tomorrow? What would the people say about you? <coughs> <clears throat> excuse me, would they make up stuff, <clears throat> which means they would lie. When that moment of opportunity to say a good or a few words, would everyone want to speak? Would everyone want to move up? When the, uh, the preacher says everyone to move to the front and line up against the wall, would everybody stand up for you? The people at the celebration, would they have anything good to say about you? Something that will make you shine. I'm way off from what I plan to say <clears throat> in this series. But I just want to ask what the story will be regarding your dash. Frankly, there is no written day or time we may leave this earth. So we must live life to its fullest. Keep God first and center. Saying the words, I love you to our loved ones every day. I apologize. Forgive me as needed. Let's not squander our time living tore up lives and living hollow lives, which has no meaning, no purpose, and no direction. Waking up every day being a hindrance in other people's lives instead of a helpmate. Being a distraction in other people's lives instead of being influential and having respect and in integrity for yourself, being a placeholder in other people's lives instead of being an active and willing participant of something positive. You're always negative about everything. Well, my time is up and I didn't get a chance to get to those mental clocks, but be with me next week. This is Frankly Friday. I'll see you next week.